I just got done posting a three-part series where I'm comparing the orange Jorgensen planes that you can get from Lowe's versus the Lee Nielsen, some would consider top-of-the-line planes. I wanted to see, for the price difference, how they performed. If you guys watched the other videos, you saw that they performed the same. Now, the orange ones need a little bit of finessing. Lee Nielsen's are ready to go out of the box. So, let's dive into that a little bit more. So here they are, side by side. I would like to say one big happy family, but I don't think Lee Nielsen would like that. The first thing I want to get out of the way. Yes, Lee Nielsen is the better plane. Lee Nielsen is, out of the ones that I've tried, the top of the line. I've never tried a Clifton, so I can't, I can't get in that argument there. But Lee Nielsen is the best plane, okay? That was, that was not what I was trying to see here. I wanted to know... For the price difference, could you get the orange planes to perform like a Lee Nielsen? Yes, you can. Absolutely. What you're noticing here is the price difference versus what you get. So if you're going to pay, if I were to buy all three of these planes right now, the Lee Nielsen's, all three of them, $652 plus their shipping. Their shipping's pricey. The Jorgensen, the orange planes, if I were to buy all three right now, $121. Now, as you saw, if you watch those videos, they took work. They took some setup. Um, they're a little bit finicky in different areas. They don't look as nice. The parts on is good. Well, what do you expect for the price? We're talking over a $500 difference. So again, clearly, Lee Nielsen's the winner. If you're looking overall at the best planes on this table, I'm not starting that argument. So just looking at these three, if you are new to woodworking, not sure if you're going to like it, if you're on a budget, if you just don't want to spend that much for a plane, then these are a great option. Just know you're going to have to get them ready. And you don't do it that often. So I don't want you to stress on that. Once you set them up, they're good for a while until you have to take the iron out and sharpen it. And even with the number four, I mean, once you get the frog set, all you're doing is taking the iron out and putting it back. With these ones, you're probably going to have to reset them again. If you leave everything where it is, it might move. Um, if your shim falls out, you know, that kind of stuff. But you don't do it that often. When you start out woodworking, a lot of people think you're going to be spending all this time setting up a plane, tearing it down, setting it up, tearing it down. No, you shouldn't be. You're going to set it up, get it set. And you'll be good until it's time to take the iron out and sharpen it. So let me go through these and tell you what I had to change or adjust or finesse or whatever. So for all three of them, the bottom needs smoothed. So if you can hear it, I mean, you can even see it taking part of my nail off. <laughs> so it's not completely smooth on the bottom. And that affected me pushing the plane. So how smooth it was to push. Now, if I smooth that down, I guarantee you it's going to be as smooth as the other one. It was square and flat, which is awesome. The sides needed rounded over because the sides were sharp. This side is sharp up top here. Some parts of the frog are sharp. Um, I don't like the look of it. So, I mean, I, I might make a new tote, but I really like the shape of this tote. That's one thing that I can say I like better than the Lie Nielsen is this tote right here. Now, my hands aren't big. So... <laughs> I don't know how it's going to fit your hand, but for my hand, I really, I really like it. I don't like this cap. Um, some people say that they're having issues with it threading out because it's like a pressed aluminum or something. I don't know, but you don't need to crank this down super hard. It does have a lifetime warranty, so it's possible that you can um, exchange this out for a different one if you run into that issue. All of the irons he held an edge really well. I was still able to shave hairs after I had used them in the tests. They're all the same thickness too. They're thicker than the Stanley irons. I love how this cap, me the, the iron meets up here. I don't think there was anything else I needed to change, but I do want to show you the frog on the number four because I'm amazed that they have this style of a frog on a $70 plane. It's something I've never seen before, but I'm really thinking we're going to start seeing it more because... Keeping the frog square is important. I actually have a video about that because people don't talk about it enough. 
These guys solved that issue. So if you look, there's two raised ribs right here and right here. Okay. Those line up with this, which keeps everything square and in line. Oh, see, here's a sharp part right here. So it needs a little cleanup. But that it keeps it square, and I'm amazed that that's there. When I put this back in here, it doesn't... If I can get it. I messed this up last time, too. There we go. So, back and forth, whatever. That's going to happen, because I don't have the screws in, but side to side. Side to side, there's, like, no play. See that? So it's not it's not getting out of square at all. So I'm amazed. I'm amazed by that. I think that's just awesome. It has the disc just like the Lee Nielsen does. Um, I mean, they just, they did a fantastic job. There is more play here. Let me set it up and I'll show you. So that's taut, loose, 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 taut. Loose, loose, loose. Well, who's taught? See that? So there is a lot of play right there. The Lie Nielsen has barely any play right there, but there's a lot here. But again, you set it up. You're not adjusting this as much as you think you are, or you're going to need to, because set it up, get it set, you're good. All right, for the 60 and a half, I needed to smooth the bottom again, round the corners, um, if you watch the video, you saw me filing and filing and filing and filing. Well, that wasn't necessary. What I learned is I just needed a shim. No matter how I adjusted this side to side, it was still digging in deeper on this side. No matter what. I could be all the way to this side. This side's not making shavings. This side's making deep shavings. So that tells me I needed to shim it, which I just used one piece of paper. Now, I probably only needed one piece of paper because I did that filing. So basically what that's telling me is it's high over here, so it's pushing it that way. It pushed it so much that it actually chipped out the mouth right there, if you can see that. So I'm thinking if I keep filing, I won't even need a shim. But again, this is 36 bucks, so I'm not worried that I need to put a little sliver of paper under there. The other thing I want to mention with this one that I noticed it's gonna be a, a little bit finicky. I'm gonna push the blade all the way to this side. So see, it's all the way to the side. Now watch as I turn this. See it move? It moves. Okay. So what you need to do, you don't crank this down too hard. You don't really need to do that. It's gonna move no matter what. Get it at the depth that you want and then adjust this. That's it. And then once you have it set, it's it's set. You're good to go. Mouth adjustment was really smooth. It's the same as the Stanley 60 and a half, the same as the Lee Nielsen. For the 101, same thing. Sand down the sides, smooth the bottom. This one, I think, is the most finicky out of all of them. I was realizing that the more I won't tighten this down, it's it's almost like it was pushing the blade forward. Now, they machine this better, so there's no play here. That can be a good or a bad thing. If your blade is square, you're good. If your blade is out of square, you cannot adjust for that. There's no way to adjust that. The Lee Nielsen, you have, you have play there to adjust. For this one, though, I had to shim it with five pieces of paper on this side. If I file it, I can fix that, is what I'm thinking. But this is 15 bucks. And for how often I use it in my shop, I'm okay with pieces of paper there. So that's going to be the sum of it. You just need to finesse those things. Just keep an eye out on the things that I had mentioned. They're great options. If you have the money, you're okay spending the money, obviously Lee Nielsen is going to be better. That's, that's no argument there. But these are great. And... They are still kind of making me question why I have a $340 plane if I just get this one set. So I am going to keep using them more, make my decision, and then I actually might just keep them and have these one be like my workhorse, my hogger ones, and then the other ones for like the fine detail work. But they're great. 
Um, I have heard of some quality control issues too, so if you get a bad one, just return it. If you're cutting heavy on one side, no matter what you change, just throw a shim in there. I'm very happy with these planes. Um, very happy with the purchase. What, $121 compared to $652? There you go. I'm going to let you do with this what you will. Um, I highly recommend giving them a try. If you are new to woodworking or you mostly are power tools and you just need a little apron plane to have on hand, these are great options. I did hear of one guy, I haven't watched the video yet, but I heard that he actually took the number four and threw it on the floor and maybe he got a bad one or maybe he's paid by somebody else. I don't I don't know, but all the other guys that I'm talking to are having great results with, with all of these planes. Um, yeah, they got to shim them and you know, maybe you got to file this down or sand that down or whatever, but 121 bucks? <laughs> That's what still just blows my mind. They're only 121 bucks. Five pieces of paper on this one, a little sandpaper. One piece of paper in this one, a little sandpaper. And then just a little sandpaper. I mean, <laughs> again, the choice is yours. But this also reminds me, to do woodworking, you do not have to do or have top-of-the-line tools. You don't. You can have any budget and get into woodworking. But these are, I don't think they're the cheapest planes out there. Maybe they are. I'm, I'm pretty sure this one is. But you don't have to have top-of-the-line tools to do woodworking. Just know you're going to have to get them set up, and you're going to have to finesse them, and don't get frustrated. It'll get there. You'll get the tool, tool to perform. If you run into any issues, let me know. I'd be happy to shoot a video, help you out, whatever I can do. If you've got the money and you want top of the line, I highly recommend Lee Nielsen. They're awesome. Again, never tried Clifton, but I hear great things about that too. Don't start an argument with me. If you want to send me a Clifton, go for it, and I'll do a review for you. Make it a number four, and then maybe I'll throw this one in there too. <laughs> but all right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great one.